Hello everyone, it's the Upform team over here, and today we're just going to go over JotForm, specifically how to kind of collect payments using JotForm forms for when you might have some sort of product you're trying to sell to your customers. Now, it's really easy to do with JotForm, arguably more easy than using Google Forms, simply because a lot of the payment platforms are kind of inbuilt already into the JotForm templates or JotForm edit editor so in this case what we're going to do is basically show you how to kind of mess around with the payment platforms with a blank form and then we're going to show you templates where a lot of it's already been set up just so you guys have an idea of how you might want to further edit it in case the template isn't exactly how you would like it okay so first let's just create a blank form where we're going to start from scratch we want a classic form and as of now, let's just put a form for our organization name and we'll just save that for now. Okay, so first things first, there are a lot of ways to get at adding the payment platform into your form. But obviously, we always start with the first step, which is adding a form element. So on the left hand side of your page, you'll always see this option with a plus button where it says add form element. If you were to click that, as you can see, you can add a bunch of elements into your Jot form form. In this case, we kind of want to look at the payment section. So this is the basic section we're currently at. We want to go to payments. And as you can see, there are multiple payment options for you to add to your form. Now, while you might recognize a lot of these payment platforms, something you may want to, re to think about before choosing any of them is that in order to use most of them, such as PayPal, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo, you need a pre-existing account in order to use it. So just so you can see it, I'm going to hit PayPal standard, and I'm going to in already input my own account over here. You just need to have your email to which your paypal account is connected to specify why you're receiving the money and in which currency you want it in and then hit the continue button so once you've already logged in or at least connected the paypal or at least whichever payment platform you're using to your corresponding account you can then see that you'll be brought to this kind of page where it's Kind of gonna allow you to basically mess around with the payment settings. Here you can add your products, you can add coupons, shipping, tax, and invoice. So obviously if someone's going to be answering your form to purchase a product, they have to be able to select that product in the first place. This is where it happens on the product page. So you're gonna want to hit create new product. You're gonna want to name it. Let's just say we are gonna call it the up form service. And then you're going to want to price it. So maybe it's just give a random number. Let's go at 25. You can even enter a short description. Um, work with my own hour special. 25 an hour. For example, just add, you can even add images. You can also scale them. You'd also need the product mandatory for submission, depending on what you might need, select by default. And then once you're happy with the first product you've uploaded, you can hit the save button. For this one, I didn't add any images just because it would take a little bit too long seeing as our hypothetical product doesn't actually exist. So let's just hit that save button. Once you've hit save, the button should appear right here on the form itself. And as you can see, it shows all the corresponding info that we added. You can keep adding more products if you hit the add product button. Where you can also edit the product name and the description and photo and the price right on the form itself. You don't actually have to use the designer on the right side anymore. So let's just do that so you guys have an idea of how it works. As you can see, I'm just adding more descriptions. I'm adding a price where I can kind of add that up. Let's just say I want to make it 40 an hour. And 
that's how you add your product. So now that we've added the products, let's just head back to payment settings. You can do that by hitting that button as you saw over there. You can then actually add some cool coupons where you can specify the code, coupon limit, where you can kind of cut it off at a certain date or by number of uses. It can be by percentage, so you can change how much of a percent they get to save on. And you can apply it to either the product or the shipping or the subtotal. In this case, we'll add the product. And you can choose which products will be included in that coupon. So let's just say we made a fake coupon and we want it to be cut off by, let's say, tomorrow. Okay. So once you're happy with it, you can kind of hit save. And from here, an enter coupon option will appear right here. And if they were to input the code, as you can see here, our OB79 into here, they would get the out the specified percentage discount. Okay, you can also enable shipping, seeing as obviously not everyone can provide free shipping for all their products. In this case, you just have to also specify what information you want to add. So if you're charging per product item or per transaction for a flat rate, whether you're shipping text in form, whether you're ena enabling weight value in case your products are heavier. And from here, you can also specify how much the shipping would cost for each product because each product would probably be different depending. Okay, then you can also go into invoice and if you were to enable this, as you can see, you would then be choosing to send them an invoice so that they basically have a record of the fact that they purchased from you. You can also change whatever information here, input your own contact information, their information so that you, or if they have any sort of concern, they can always go back to you for it. Okay, and that's the basics for enabling a payment plan on your job form. Hopefully this helps you better manage any data collection or sort of business action that you might be hoping to do with your website. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you need any more help when it comes to job form, be sure to check out the rest of our videos and channel using either the link on the upper right corner of this video or any of the links below. See you next time.